Hey everybody, <clears throat> this week's assignment for recording is going to be similar to last week. It's going to be recording uh, either Corral 4 or Corral 5. Corral 5 is kind of fun, it's a little bit longer and has some formatas with it. I want to talk about some edits and suggestions that I was repeating a lot when listening to recordings last week. The main one was use a metronome with headphones. Some people did a really nice job doing this. Ibrahim, you did a great job uh, using the metronomes. All of his notes are exactly together, and all the releases are together as well. So it was a really nice job on, on him listening. You've got to both use the metronome and then also use your ears when you're playing back. So make sure you're doing that with a metronome. To do that, this has got to be set on to whatever tempo you have. Um, you get to pick whatever that is, 120 or slower or faster, whatever is fine, as long as it's set. For mine, I'll do 92. Okay, so I want to do Corral 5. looks more fun than Corral 4, so I'll be doing Corral 5. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'll only be doing the first two measures with pickup. Okay, so headphones are going in. Okay, headphones are out, so I want to listen back to this. There are some, uh, the whole thing sounds fine, but it doesn't sound great. There are some areas that I'm playing a little bit weaker than I could. So I'm going to go back and play. I'll turn the metronome here. I'll leave it on so you can hear what I'm hearing through the headphones while I'm playing. First thing I hear, maybe here as well, is one of these has water in them one of the tracks or maybe a couple of them. So what I'm going to do is play it again and press this headphone feature. That makes it solo so no one else is playing. When I have that down, I can only hear that part. Also, I'll turn off the metronome so I can hear better. Here we go. Aha, looks like it's this alto part. I'll go back and listen to the alto part. Now, uh, it is the alto part. I can do one of two things. I can either delete the whole track and start again, or I can just edit a section of it. I'm going to delete the whole thing and start again. So I'll click it, press delete, turn this off, turn metronome on, and I'll try recording again. I'll put my headphones on. This way I can hear the metronome, and the recorder can't. I came in one beat early, so the next thing I can do is I can edit. What I'm going to do is use the zoom in feature. And there's that darn note here. So what I can do is just cut that note out by using split playhead feature. Right click and split at playhead, split at playhead, and delete. And let's see if I can hear a little bump or if the whole thing is good. Sounds great. Now there's another edit I want to make is one of the instruments is hanging a little bit too long over. So I want to hear who that is. So I'll go back and listen from here. The last note, someone is hanging over. Listen again. I don't know which voice that is. So what I can do is now I'll use the mute feature. I'll cut out an instrument and listen again and see if that fixes it. Wasn't the bass part. Wasn't tenor. Tenor is good. Maybe it was alto. Let's see. Mm hmm. It wasn't alto, so probably going to be the soprano part. Let's listen. Looks like it was a soprano part. So, what I can do now is I can re record the whole track or I can make a new edit track. I want to show you guys the second option of make a new edit track, and I'm only going to play the last, take the last note because I think the rest of it sounds great. So, I'm going to play it through again. Metrum is on. I'm going to hear all the other voices except for the soprano part. Sounds great. Now, if I want to put just this last note in there, I'll use the same feature we were looking at earlier. 
the zoom in feature. And now I want to find a spot. There we go. That's silent. So the line's flat for both of them. I use shift to select both these tracks and use the split at playhead option here. And if I was going on, I'd use the split at playhead feature here as well, where they're both, there's where that one stops. You can see it's late. And there's where that one stops. Split at playhead. And I zoom back out. And I delete this. Drag this one in. And delete these two. And I'll see if we can hear a difference. I'm going to solo this line. It's seamless. Because I did it during the silence, you can't hear the splice happening. Now I'll play it from the beginning with everyone. Excellent. It sounds great. Now I'll turn the metronome off so I can send it through. This was the main error I was hearing from a lot of us was the metronome was not lining up for everyone. So uh, there were people notes that were starting at different times or coming in, um, well, coming in or ending at the wrong spot. So use the metronome feature. Then if you want to splice also, that's how you do it. I was just showing some other students an example of how much I splice an actual piece I was working on. So here's a piece I recorded of Shaheem's earlier. And you can see how much I splice each different part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different times for this track, uh, six times for this track, five times for this track, and oodles of time for this track. So splicing is uh, the way to make your sound, uh, your, your production, the best. So feel free to use that. You just want to make sure you're doing it at the right times. Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys got this week for Corral. What was it, four or five? One of these two.